In 1945, a new world organization was born, the United Nations. For once, we would have supposedly a group of nations that could get together and deal with the problems of the world. The United Nations sees no distinction. They, they feel like every country is uh, as equal as anyone else, even if they enslave their people, prosecute uh, people who speak their minds. You have an equal place at the table because we're all sovereign countries. <laughs> One of the things that's very difficult for outsiders to understand about the UN is how ill-prepared and untrained most of its staff are. I went from being a secretary in Cambodia working on the logistics of the election to being a operations officer in their intelligence and operations unit. So you end up being in charge of military operations in a way in which you have absolutely no training or, or no right to be there and people get killed because of that. They knew the attack was coming. They did not expect it to be so sudden or so intense. Nor did anyone expect the small United Nations garrison to become a target. The UN doesn't have an army. It, it borrows, it begs on its knees. So here's this world organization on its knees begging countries to give it the assets to the job that these countries say they want them to do through the Security Council. I mean, the logic of it is, is incredible. It's not that the UN didn't know what was going on. They were told not to do anything. And why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. I want senior officials here to look us, junior people in the face, who've risked their lives. Go talk to the parents of kids who believed in the UN and who died. It's genocide. All bets are off. You do what you can to save lives. I don't think they've done what they can to save lives. I know they have.